So why are we just going to Sunday church, walking out, and then dead the rest of the week, tired of cultural, traditional things? I want you. You're saying, this is how I grew up, so this is the right way, and if God tells me another way, that's not right. When you start talking about something you're going through mentally, everybody's like, oh, you just need to pray more. There is depression going on in our churches. There is anxiety going on in our churches. channel today's video wasn't really planned it kind of just came into my heart i've been planning the actual video for a long time but for it to be something to just like sit down i randomly just got the thought today that i need to share this and it's just been something that's growing on my heart so welcome back to another irena talk series today is going to be about religion as you can tell by the title it might be a little misleading The title might be a little misleading to some people that don't get the actual context of the video, but it's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. I'm done with living religiously and not actual relationship with Jesus. I have my older iPhone here for notes and references since I'm filming with my phone. <sighs> I keep having to get up and tend to my little baby. So if you hear noises in the background, it's because she's in her swing and the sound of the jungle is going. So, back to what I was saying. The reason that I even started thinking of this, I feel like this has been maybe over two months in process of me thinking about this video and just having a big passion to really speak on this topic because I feel like it is so popular to go about Christianity this way, religious way, and not relationship. It's so much easier to do the things that come with religion rather than actually seeking that relationship with Jesus yourself. Why do you think the Pharisees were always looking at the, at the disciples and saying, well, they're not doing our traditions. They're not doing the things we do. How come they get almost like special treatment, but they were actually seeking Jesus for who he is and not doing the things that come with religion. There's nothing wrong with going to church, with singing, with participating but when that becomes your main focus and you leave the church not being the church in the world what was the point of going to church what is the point of us playing church just walking in doing all the things singing preaching praying walking out and what benefit did that actually bring us were we able to bring in a person from the world and speak to them? Or was it only for our benefit? Our little concert that we like to go to. Some people like to go to church for that check mark. Some people like to go to church to judge other people. Oh, was that person at church? Oh, what is that person wearing? I don't think that's, that's really godly. Like we come to church with our own terms, our own mindset, not to actually receive Jesus. I do not believe that is what Jesus called us to do, to walk into church, to play church, to walk out and forget who the church actually is. It's our body. It's not the temple, the sanctuary, the place that we go to. It's us. We are the church. So why are we just going to Sunday church, walking out, and then dead the rest of the week? We don't tell anybody about Jesus. We don't think about Jesus. I'm not saying this is everybody, but I'm saying this is a lot of comfortable, lukewarm Christians. It's basically eating once a week, and then you're waiting till next Sunday to eat again, and you're like, that's enough for me. I, I went to church on Sunday, what else do you want from me? Church will not save you. Church can strengthen you. If you come to church already, going through your week, and reading the word, and actually connecting to Jesus, not being dry, and dead the whole week and then coming to church and just asking God revive me because I'm not feeling close to you. You can't really do much when you just come into that building once a week expecting some fire to happen and then the rest of the week you're dry, you're not even seeking him, you're just you're dead on the inside. You're not eating spiritual food. I feel like my whole life I've almost lived up to my parents faith and always had that mindset of 
well, I grew up in a Christian home and my parents are Christian, so I'm basically like in that category too, until I realize it's your own personal relationship with Jesus when you start personally seeking him and he personally starts revealing things to you that need to be changed about you, even traditions that you need to break that you've been doing your whole life because it's the right thing to do, but he opens up to you, that's not of him, that's culture. And when you start telling other people about it, they don't understand. They're like, how do you just live your whole life doing something that all of a sudden you look at it a different way. But when you start seeking Jesus personally, he reveals that himself to you. And he reveals it so vividly, you know it's from him. So that's why it's so dangerous living under your parents' faith and thinking because I grew up in a Christian home, I'm automatically saved. Just because your parents have faith doesn't mean it's perfect faith. They will make mistakes. If you just copy everything that they do because they're Christian and they go to church, where's that personal relationship with God where he actually tells you what I want you to do? Here's my will. Here's what I don't approve of. And here are the traditions and cultural things that I'm gonna break for you because this is not the main point for Christianity. Things that you've been taught your whole life. I actually got a prophecy a couple months ago and God was saying, you're gonna come to a point where you're gonna ask me, reveal everything new to me. I'm tired of cultural, traditional things. I want you. I want to know what is your will. And sure enough, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm like, God, I'm on a clean slate. I want you to tell me how to live my life. Not only my parents, not saying they did anything wrong, not ch the church, not family. You tell me how you want me to live my life and that's how I'm gonna live my life. Not according to people, not according to image. I don't care what people think. People are not gonna matter in the end when it's between me and God. It doesn't matter what people think. You ask him for yourself. How do you want me to live? How do you want me to serve you? It's all about him. And going along with only living by your parents' faith, you end up not living to your true calling because you're, you're limiting God. You're saying, this is how I grew up, so this is the right way. And if God tells me another way, that's not right because it's out of my comfort zone and that's not how I grew up. So I'm sorry, God, but we're gonna have to go along with my plans and not yours. But God, please move. Please move in the way that you want to move in my heart, in my life, but not not in this sphere. Let's, let's not touch on that because I grew up like that. I'm kind of comfortable where I am. Mm, we're not gonna change that part of my life. It's our job to stop limiting him. Can you imagine the early church and a lot of them just always followed the Old Testament. And then all of a sudden, this guy named Jesus comes and he's proclaiming that he's the Messiah. And then everything that he starts preaching starts basically contradicting everything that they've ever been doing. You say it's wrong to kill someone? Well, if you even hate them, that's basically killing. You say it's wrong to commit adultery? Well, if you even think about it in your mind, that's already committing adultery. Like, he came and started turning their whole world upside down. Everything that they've ever known was like, no, this this is what I say now. This is this overpowers what you've been following along your whole life. And I feel like that's what's happening right now. A huge revival in our culture specifically on the things that have been set as traditions and cultures and we've just been like living that comfortable christian life and jesus is really opening up our hearts if we're actually seeking him and wanting to know the truth not coming to him with our terms saying this is how you're going to move in my life but please open up new things to me like no we have to come to him with a clean slate already and let him fill up our slates. We have known Jesus and about Jesus our whole life, but have we actually had a true, true relationship with him? I just want you, as you're watching this, to think about it for yourself. Have you actually started seeking Jesus for who he is and not your parents' faith, not the church and what they say, but your own personal relationship? 
every single day seeking his will. I just want you to actually take some time to think about that. In Hebrews 11, it talks about our faith and it talks about our ancestors' faith and how we will have or supposed to have even greater faith than our ancestors. And we will do even greater things than Jesus himself did on this earth. And we always hear and read about the things that Jesus did back then, but he literally told us that you guys will be doing what I do and more. Can you imagine the power that lives inside of us when we truly start seeking a relationship with God him revealing that to us and us using the power that it says in the word that we're going to be doing even more than Jesus did on this earth. Like we, we can't even comprehend what that looks like right now because we have not stepped into that power and that relationship yet. But that's exactly how God is calling us to live life in abundance. That's the life that he gave us. And so whenever we go about our day and our routines and just like Oh, life is so boring, mundane, repetitive. You need to be seeking more because if life is getting boring and repetitive, that means you're not living life in abundance. You're not seeking his full will and his calling on your life. Imagine how great of faith um, everybody had, like in the Old Testament, when they didn't even see Jesus, they didn't even know about him yet. They knew there was a promise, but they didn't know and actually meet Jesus and they already have such amazing faith Abraham um, David Moses we hear about those stories in Sunday school and it's almost like the cute little fantasy stories like he beat Goliath or he led people through the sea and it opened up and people were able to cross or he was able to open that lion's mouth like we hear about these amazing stories but for us we almost don't even think of it as something that happened in real life, but almost like a fantasy. And then we grow up remembering those stories and we don't actually realize that that actually happened. God is the same as he was back then, right now. He can do that. He did that. He doesn't change. It's us who change. It's us who are not willing to seek after our calling, to go after a relationship with him and see what he wants to reveal to us how he wants to use us in our life. He's there, he's waiting for us to truly seek his heart. This is our call to step into our power, to step into the relationship with Jesus. Seek the kingdom first and everything else will come to you after that. The kingdom is the number one thing. Not worried about how will God provide, what is my calling in life, you seek the kingdom first and everything else like a domino effect will follow after and one of the very last things that i wanted to mention was oftentimes i hear the older generation almost like speaking down on the younger generation oh we used to sit in jail for jesus we went through so much and look at this generation they're just cold they're not seeking a relationship they are very they're getting very comfortable in life but Anytime I hear that, I almost, I want to encourage these young people. Right now, this generation, like never before, has such a mental, spiritual, just in your mind battle like there has never been before. The things that are thrown at us left and right from media, from schools, from everywhere. Yes, they went through the physical torture they went through the physical suffering but right now is the mental suffering that nobody even talks about that's the hardest part when you start talking about something you're going through mentally everybody's like oh you just need to pray more i'm sorry there is depression going on in our churches there is anxiety going on in our churches there is suicidal thoughts sadly going on in our churches but we're not talking about it because Christians don't go through that, right? No, if you go through that, you just need to you just need to pray a little harder, which is true, but there's also the human communication that Jesus has given to us so that we talk about it to one another, encourage one another, not shut out the conversation because it's not happening because of our image being ruined. Like we need to start talking about these things because that is what that is what is ruining our 
Christian generation right now is keeping things on the down low and making sure our image looks great, but on the inside, we're dying. And so, yes, the older generation went through so much, and I'm not saying anything that they are worse than us or that they're over-exaggerating, that they weren't persecuted for their faith. And I 100% believe that it was probably such a tough life for them. But for what we're going through right now is the invisible. It's the spiritual mental realm that nobody knows and that nobody talks about, which makes it that much harder. And so we need to start speaking on the things that people are going through and start breaking those chains, start breaking those curses, those generational curses, those lies that the enemy has been feeding this younger generation. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You are not worthy. You don't belong. All of these lies that are leading people into self-hate, depression, suicidal thoughts, um, the lie of pornography, the lie of addiction. We need to start addressing these topics before it's too late, before we look and say, how did our child go from being like this and now I don't even know who my child is. Let's start addressing these topics and stop caring about image because what is image going to do in the end? Nothing. So I just truly believe there is a huge revival going right now in our minds, in the shift of everything. There is, there is something stirring up in the spiritual world because I'm not the only one that's having these revelations. I talk to people and they are having the same things like, wow, I've always lived like this, thought like this, and thought it was the right thing. And now I'm realizing we're doing something wrong. We are comfortable. We need to get out of this playing church mindset and actually start seeking this real relationship with Jesus, not the Jesus that we have created in our minds and put him in a box and put him in our standards and put him in our structured lives. And I actually totally forgot to pray before I made this video, but I'm going to end off in a prayer. Um, I'm just, I can't, I'm, I can't keep this back anymore. I'm so passionate about this topic. I'm so happy that this world is being stirred up like never before. I'm so excited for this revival. So I'm gonna end off in a prayer and then I'll close out the video. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity that I was able to film this video, Lord, for your glory, for the knowledge, for the wisdom that was spoken through me. And that Holy Spirit was really stirring up my heart to speak the truth and to set people free, set the oppressed free, set our minds free to the toxic, culture or traditional things we've been doing that isn't of your will lord that isn't the main point that is just a distraction from the enemy and he doesn't want us to focus on the real thing and that's you that's the relationship with you that's revealing the truth how we've been so blinded by everything we've been so blinded by the lies that he's been telling us that we're not enough that we're not worthy of your glory that you don't even listen to us when we pray to you, Lord, of all those lies he's been feeding us, Lord. The second that we start seeking a relationship with you and seeking the kingdom first, that blind spot, that veil will be removed from our eyes and we will be able to see our true selves in the mirror and how you see us with your eyes, Jesus. I pray that this conversation will keep going in families in churches and your revival will happen in this generation in jesus name i pray amen thank you guys so much for watching and i pray that this encouraged you and and it was spoken directly into your heart and not as judgment or condemnation but from one believer to another and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day whenever whatever time you guys are watching this I'll see you guys in my next video.